listening to The Dr. Robin Show on Sirius XM's Urban View. Welcome back to The Dr. Robin Show on Sirius XM Channel 126. I shared with you at the top of the show that my guest, Michelle Green Rhodes, she is an RN. Um, she's a nurse. That means she is a healer. She knows about, yeah, I see, you should see her. I can see Michelle right <laughs> now and we're, um, but she, you are a healer and you have come uh, really to bring a message of wellness, of hope, of inspiration and of information um, to the Dr. Robin audience and to me. So welcome to the Dr. Robin show. Thank you, Dr. Robin, so much for having me this afternoon. So grateful to be here. I'm thrilled. So I'm going to start with, I said to you before we went on um, the air, I said, we're going to co-create this together. So there's a, the, the roadmap we're going to make um, together. And the audience has learned, the Dr. Robin audience, that we never quite know what's going to happen because there's something um, between people that emerges that you couldn't plan for. So I'm already expecting um, those kinds of gems and treasures, but I have a question that I do ask every guest who um, comes to, you know, and, and graces us with their expertise and presence. And I have a prescription um, called wake up, show up, grow up, rise up. And that prescription um, was used and is used by me and by actually at this point, you know, thousands, if not millions of people around the country and world mm -hmm. who are transforming adversity and hardship into purpose and power. And, and so that happened, um, that came to me because I was in two serious car accidents, one in 2010, one in 2016. And I've also um, had the floor of my life fall out. Let's just say that. And my audience knows that I've written in my books about um, that looks can be deceiving. So I, I know a lot about mm -hmm. suffering, personally, about suffering. Yes. And so um, that prescription was my way of coming back into my own life, into my own purpose, when it looked as if Michelle, that everything could have been over for me. Uh, one injury, and you'll understand this as a nurse, from the first accident was my body. The second accident left me with a traumatic brain injury. And I'm great now, but, you know, I words are my, they're my living. They are my meaning. And so I had to figure out, you know, who am I now? Mm -hmm. And so my question for you mm -hmm. is what was your wake up moment? And I know we have hundreds or thousands of them. So but many. <laughs> yes, so many. But what was your wake up moment, at least in this moment, that called you more fully and more holy? And maybe that's holy with a W and an H um, into being who you were born and destined to be. All right. Uh, I'm going to give a shot at this because I mentioned so many, and like you mentioned, we all have those moments. But I think the one pivotal moment that brought me to this this second right now is was during the pandemic. Like so many others, we've heard we had those come to Jesus moments. We've had the the H and the W H uh, holy uh, whole being type moments. Um, long story short, my Past up until that moment for the past five years prior to that moment in 2020 was, you know, up until that moment, I had been writing and self-publishing and it was all about Michelle and bringing a brand and helping other nurses find their brand and create those. But there was a moment in time where I, I heard the, the summons to um, give more of yourself. Mm. It's not all about you. <laughs> and so I think the pandemic helped me see that but it was just a really pivotal moment because I had like I said five years of building this brand which I thought it would be all about Michelle Green Roads where now it's color wellness I don't even want anyone to know my name anymore 
And that's because I was sitting here at this desk working at that time saying, you know, what's the next campaign? What's next? You know, what are we doing this year? Uh, and I came across those startling statistics that three, that African-Americans were dying at three times the rate of any other race during the height of the pandemic. And I'm sitting, you know, at home enjoying my business, but I see nurses, my fellow colleagues on the news and trash bags and no PPE and making masks at home. And it just was that whole pivotal moment that said, this is bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Give it away from this. And I was, I always tell everyone that I tell this story, it was almost a digital, I call it a divine download, excuse me, which you turn into digital. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a divine download to say, use what you have. And there were three key areas, which we can talk about in a moment. Uh, but give, give what you have and put it into the hands of the people. That was my directive. Okay. And Color Wellness was born. And at that time, it was a physical magazine, which meant that's when I say the hands of the people was just to say, what could I pour out of myself out of after 20 plus years of nursing and give to our community right into their hands. So that's the short version of no, the story. No, but and it, I am thank you for sharing that because out of adversity, out of hardship, not only, you know, what was impacting you, but you were watching, as you said, your colleagues, you were watching I mean, your comrades in nursing and, and, you know, the ones and we know that nurses are the ones who hold up the hospitals. I mean, you can't and, and not to, you know, no shade on doctors, you know, and my father was a physician. I mean, we know we need them. We need a, we need everybody. But we do know that when you have a nurse who stands bedside. Um, you have an advocate, you have someone who isn't coming and going during, you know, five minute rounds. And so for you to be called away from your own brand that you had been nurturing and cultivating, before we get into like how, you know, the color of wellness unfolded, when you have that divine download, did you just say yes? Or did you say, mm, I'm not so sure about this. I'm, I'm <laughs> just wondering, like, what was that moment like for you? I'm going to say it was a resounding yes. And I know that's probably atypical because sometimes we do question, but I think I had been getting little glimpses along the journey. There were times when I did think of a magazine and I did say, uh, and there were times where I did say, how could I help the community better? That's not where the money is. Eh. So there was a little, I believe, along the way, when I think back, um, glimpses to say, you're almost there, but you're not quite there. But then that moment just was like, these are the three things, pull yeah. them together. And that's why the yes was so resounding. Yes, yes, yes. So let's talk about those three things, those three areas, those pillars, if you will, and how that came to you. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. Sure, sure. Well, we'll start with my experience. I think that it plays a big piece into it. And just almost when you have this, I, I think about people who have these um, near-death experiences and they say their life flashed before their their phase or their thoughts. It was almost like that where I saw 20 years of what they call managed care nursing, which I was a insurance nurse. So I'm working for the big insurers of the world that you probably can think of, or you have their insurance cards. In your so I had seen the numbers. I had seen the data. I've seen the population health initiatives and created programming from scratch and been a part of beta testing and all sorts of things over those years. So that was one big piece when I said, wow, you did all that work, but it was really for a bigger reason. So I thought about all of the, even the patients I've talked to over the phone who struggle with certain conditions and how we help them. So I'm going to say that first pillar was so obvious because it, I knew that I was probably one of the few, I don't know, <laughs> Black nurses who worked that long in that area, moved up the ladder, got into leadership, run and save companies millions of dollars. I, I had to bring that in a different way. Mm -hmm. It wasn't going to be all corporate information anymore. Yes. Yeah. So you not were a whistleblower, but you did blow the horn of information so that you could take 
what you learned in one place and apply it to the people who needed it most. Yeah. So you know, the, yeah, the, the statement that, and I just said this to someone yesterday where uh, it's a cliche, but not untrue that when the majority culture, whether that is, you know, white affluent people, um, because poverty certainly harms everyone, no matter what race you are, but that when white people um, who have means get a cold, black people get pneumonia. Yes. You know, when we are diagnosed less with breast cancer, but we die more, you know, how is it uh, and that's what you're talking about, that our numbers and you're, you know, with COVID as well, that we were at the mercy of something two, three, four times greater than the majority population. And so what was the next step as you realized, okay, I have this body of information and now what, you know, what did, what was your next move after that? Mm -hmm. So this, the next step was the writing piece, um, unbeknownst to me. And again, you think about these things and you, you hit that area and you say, wow, now it all makes sense. So I think about my journey in writing um, where I, I have to give credit to my mother. We always do. <laughs> um, I lost my mother in 2016 and she probably was a part of this spiritually mm -hmm. as well. Uh, I can remember her and I always tell this story. Um, we, we didn't have much. It was just her and I. So we didn't have a car. We have a phone. I didn't have my own room until I was, you know, probably a teenager. Yeah. So we walked a lot of places or took cabs. And so we would walk to the library every Saturday. I remember her being so passionate about the library. And at that time, I couldn't see it. But I was like, not again. Are we? And so one particular day, it was raining. It started to rain. We're walking. And I looked at her like, is it this serious mom? Like, we have to go. And she was like, yes, we're almost there. And she covered me with her jacket. In those moments, I was like, it, it all makes sense now because she wanted to just instill this passion into me for reading. I remember even, you know, younger than that, reading on her lap. Then take out your paper. Let's write a story. Tell me about your day. But write me a paragraph. So just small things like that over the years that I didn't realize was really building this this love for writing and reading. So, you know, fast forward, uh, what, 40 years later, maybe, uh, I am now self-published eight times and then went back to help, at that time, nurses. Hey, do you all want to learn how to, to be self-published or become an author? And they loved it because no one else was out here teaching. I attract Black nurses, although I've helped all sorts of, yeah. all races of, of nurses. But, um, you know, I used that skill at that time to just help them because, again, I wanted to give back and say, okay, well, this is how you do it. But um, with this whole new revelation, I realized that that love for writing was going to now move into um, magazine writing, more of a community health and population health type writing, which would, again, boost not just my business, but um, this brand basically. So yeah. when this brand was born, how could you infuse that writing and put that passion on paper and get it out to the people? So that was the second pillar. You know, a question I have about your mother, your beloved mother, uh, two questions. One, would she be surprised um, at what you are doing now and how it has blossomed and grown? Um, so that's question one. And question two, and you maybe I should have asked you question two as question one. What was your mother's background? Because you talked about the library and you also talked about it was just the two of you didn't have, you know, a lot of external um, comforts and you didn't have your own room until you were maybe a teenager, not a phone, not a car. So I'm curious because I know that people are listening right now. And we've got this fantasy about the people who make it mm -hmm. in the world, the people who make a difference had, you know, they had a lot and you had a lot, but at the same time you had very little. So I'm just curious, what was your mother's background? And also would she be surprised as she's watching you shine? <laughs> wow. <sighs> Well, I would just really quickly answer the second one. I think she's not surprised at all. I think she knew 
she saw a light in me and just wanted to do whatever she could during that time to help foster um, me intelligently, <laughs> uh, my intelligence, wellness, as we would call it. Um, and she was so passionate about education because she missed out on a lot of opportunities, which takes me into back to number one. So I will say she was in healthcare. She was a, I don't know if you've ever heard of the person that works with the nurse called the certified nurse's assistant. Yes. So she said she assisted the nurses in nursing home for years, worked the night shift, toiled, told me stories about, you know, her back aching, turning patients over. They did that hard grunt work. Yes. That nobody else wants to do. And you know what else type of work they do. I was going to say, well, I'm going to put that out there, meaning they are cleaning people. They are wiping. I mean, bowel, feces, urine, blood. I mean, you know, they, they are doing the unpretty and yet the most necessary because whether someone can be well or not, they can be clean. Right. They can feel cared for. And so what a powerful uh, job and ministry in many ways, you know, that that work is that your mother was doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, so many times it does get framed as a negative thing because of what they're doing or no one else wants to do it. But it was really, from what I could tell, one of the few choices that she had back then, you know, it was a very low entry. You could just at least take a test and get into that type of field. But she would always encourage me to go further. Like, mm -hmm. don't stop here. You got to keep learning. And so that was one piece of it. But the other piece of it is she, I, I will always say my mo mother was a brilliant woman. <laughs> and so she finished one year of community college for nursing. She never finished the second year. And she said she fell in love and the rest of the story is history. Didn't finish the program. So she was, we would have this inside joke. She, to me, it was a joke. She'd say, I was almost a nurse. I can do what you're doing. You don't have anything on me. And again, now that I look back and I think about those things what she teased me about, but it was almost like a hurt, a void, something that she of course. just wished she could have finished. And so that's a part of my why, because I think about that joke and I said, mom wasn't joking. Mm -hmm. And so because she didn't get that one year done and maybe had a different type of trajectory in nursing, because yeah. I think she always wanted to be that registered nurse. Then I said, I'm going to do all that I can um, to help, you know, other nurses get where they want to be. So that's why I am so passionate about helping other, especially black registered nurses shine, because I don't see another platform out there doing it for them. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's beautiful. And Sometimes, you know, whether it's our mothers, our fathers, our aunties, our, un our uncles, uh, it's hard to sometimes use the language to talk about our grief, the grief of what happened to our own dreams and our own aspirations. Absolutely. You know, and so uh, my mother used to say she was a psychiatric social worker and she used to talk about, I mean, which is true, that often what we joke about has truth in it. Um, it's just easier to say it as a joke than it is to really say, I want the best for you and I feel my own ache as I watch you shine, which is great, but I want it to shine too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's it so right that's, there. So, that's, so you're... Your mother's very much a part of uh, the color of wellness. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, mm -hmm. without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So pillar three, the third, yeah, to take us there. <laughs> so it's a combination. So I really, I'm going to label it liaison because I was always that person who either, again, I'm talking to patients or um, in corporate, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this third pillar where I'm going to call it a liaison type of, of positioning where I have a great camaraderie with those nurses. And again, I mentioned the platform and helping Black nurses shine and giving them a place to platform. Like, I don't know if you had a chance to check out our covers, but beautiful covers for the past three years. Yes. And we get, that's probably our lead <laughs> magnet. Because people are like, wow, these are nurses or they're doctoral nurses. Or, and they're in evening gowns and on the beach. Like, 
things you never see. So there's a relativity there. And I just, again, wanted a place for them to shine because I didn't see a voice and outlet for them. Um, I see them on the front lines though, yes. right? And so that is a piece of me. Uh, but the other part is the corporate piece. It's mm -hmm. being able to talk that talk in the C-suite and say, this is why this is important and be able to bring dollars and cents and this is why it's needed. And hey, you're going to look great in the community by, by partnering with us. So I'm able to have those conversations and get the, the money, the funding needed to help us thrive. So we've had hospitals who have sponsored us just because I'm able to do that. And again, I knew that was a piece of me that, again, I don't know how many other nurses are doing that, but they could talk that you know, talk corporate talk and get the funding needed so it helps us stay sustainable. So absolutely. Well, you know, it's interesting that balance you're talking about one of breaking the ceiling and the ceiling being the invisibility of black nurses, as you're saying, evening gowns and beach and but being whole people, you know, whole women um and men. Uh but you know absolutely Absolutely. Uh, you know, but whole people who are Black people and competent and well-trained and have so much going for them. And so what I think, you know, here we are, uh, both of us as African-American women, but what so often happens is if we don't see anyone who looks like us and other people don't see anyone who looks like us, they could actually imagine that there isn't anyone except for you and me. And so part of also what you've done is you pulled the curtain back and shared in that C-suite that there are great nurses who have so much to offer and because of your corporate work, meaning your corporate training, you understood that money had to be also, um, how was it, you know, what was in it for them? What's in it for the hospital to partner with you? And right. so you were able, I mean, there's a sales piece of your, <laughs> of, a right, of the color of wellness. I mean, making it something that people want to, that executives want to partner with because it is not just the right thing to do, but it is the smart thing from a business standpoint to do. You word that so beautifully. <laughs> but absolutely, absolutely positively um, needed. Uh, the relativity piece, they're so, it's so rich. I always tell the team, this is so rich. This is much bigger than just the magazine and all the things. Because now we get into relativity, we get into trust factors, which a lot of our, now we're talking about the, the messaging that we create behind the scenes. We have to address trust in the Black community in healthcare. Now we're getting ready this year is talk about racism. So we're slowly like peeling the layers back of the onion. And we haven't done that yet. We've just been, you know, hell, uh, high blood pressure and water yeah. and walking but we've got to pivot and get down a little deeper into really the roots. And then we can move forward and, and address some bigger issues. So um, it all plays a part of this, this beautiful, I call it, you know, my little own storm. That's why our logo looks like that. It's, the, it's a, like a, the, the perfect storm. Yes, it is. You know, as you talk about the issue of um, high blood pressure and, you know, cardiac um being cardiac compromised, you know, and diabetes and some of the things that um, African-American people in general have taken as almost it's a part of our birth right, I mean, or birth burden, actually, that, you know, being uh, obesity and diabetes and not eating well and skin conditions, I mean, that, that we haven't had someone, or we haven't had enough of exposure about what the possibilities are for wellness. And so I'd love for you to talk about the possibilities to be well as a people. Wow, oh, love that question. And the reason I do is because of that 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 20 year process of working with the community, the, the job that I used to do. But of course, by the time I received those cases, 
it's in stage this, stage four that chronic disease here, which is another reason why I positioned this as a wellness brand, because of course we don't see much of that. It's the chronic disease and how to manage that now that we've been diagnosed. So wellness is really the absence of that. It's staying on the what we call a spectrum on the first front end of the spectrum. And there's pieces that really evolve into on the other side of the spectrum, chronic disease, um, stage four, end stage, and then of course death. So there's a whole health spectrum. And I wanted to bring knowledge and education towards the front end of the spectrum, meaning how could we prevent you know, you've seen uh, articles that talk about prevention, but I didn't see much in the way of Black families preventing yes. the chronic conditions that we are most times diagnosed with. So we do try very hard to stay on that end of the spectrum. Although if we do talk about, say, breast cancer, it's more of an awareness uh, piece and screenings. So we do you know, want to address that, but just in a preventative way. And of course, we always include a nutrition and exercise piece because that's just the core of it. And then from there, I look at, and like you heard me mention earlier, the intellectual wellness. Like, So there's eight pillars of wellness and wellness isn't just physical. It is a, much more than that. And so we do incorporate that whole spectrum of wellness, meaning we could move into intellectual and uh, occupational wellness and emotional wellness, spiritual wellness. So now we're able to address the whole uh, person so that we can think about what it looks to be totally well outside of chronic disease. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's um, essential, again, because if we don't see it and we don't hear it, we don't, we can't believe it. I mean, we, we can't, we think that it's for, again, the rich and famous. I have often said about therapy that people say, well, I'm not crazy. And they think, okay, therapy is for crazy people, white people, and rich people, or some combination of those three, not knowing that therapy is what people do um, who want to take care of their whole selves um, when their hearts are sad or when they have children who are struggling, that therapy is not about craziness and it's not about um, access, even in terms of being wealthy. It's about feeling worthy, not wealthy, but worthy to care for the inner and outer man and woman. Um, so as you say that, that wellness has uh, many facets and you are, the color of wellness is addressing all of those facets and trying, I think if I hear you correctly, to show people again, what is actually possible for them and for their lineage. Absolutely. You're just hitting the, the nail on the head. And it's beautiful when we can share what we do and educate uh, our community on the vision because it, it does take, it, it has taken lots of education. So I completely agree with you, Dr. Robin, because it, it has been seen as, it, it, do I need to do this? Uh, can I afford to do that? What you're talking about? Oh, I don't eat organic. Or I've had mothers write and say, I've had mushrooms. Thank you for that article with mushrooms. For the first time in my life at 60 years old. Like, so it's been yes. amazing to see just through education, the barriers that have been broken. Uh, we're just getting started. So it's, it is, it's a almost a sweet spot where mm -hmm. a sweet and bittersweet place, I should say, where, gosh, for all these years, we've missed out on some opportunity. And you hear, oh, it's never too late. So I do embrace that. And okay, let's make the changes now. Yes. But another piece of that is targeting, we specifically target our target market, our young women, young Black women, uh, so that they can be, because we found them to be most times the decision makers in the Black household to in regards to health and wellness and also we want them to and we charge them in the articles how can you apply this to um either your family or your children or take this article to your doctor we put that in front of our magazine to take these, I love that. You know, articles to your doctor and talk to them about the next steps for you yeah you know i love that because you're also empowering in a very concrete way this isn't um, something to be held secret. You're saying you may not be able to 
explain all of this, but take this to your doctor and show them what you are considering, what you're wondering about. You mentioned mushrooms. Um, tell us the value of eating mushrooms. I mean, because people again might hear this and say, okay, well, what's what's the magic in mushrooms? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, well, I didn't write that article. Actually, I had a chef, a nurse chef. See, we're so messed up, multifaceted. Um, but what we do to strive to do, just to answer your question, is like I mentioned, we always put a, a nutrition piece in there and that may or may not be a recipe. And we always put some sort of activity in there. But, you know, during the year that we had the nurse chef, she did speak through vegan recipes because she was vegan, vegan mm -hmm. and also organic. I just wanted her to speak to that as well. So just being able to put more vegetables into their recipes and consider how really organic, not as expensive as we think. We actually had an article about that, how we can now make those small changes to improve our wellness. So I yeah. hope that answered your question, but that's really no, what it that did. was. No, because I think, again, what we're talking about is getting the information in the hands of the people who are the decision makers. And that sometimes we don't recognize, we a person could feel like they have no options, that they don't have any choices, but they often feel that because they don't have information and they haven't been taken seriously by someone and by an organization like yours that says your life matters and your health matters and whatever it is that was in your lineage, um, you can turn it around you know, when we're saying it's never too late. And not only can you turn it around for yourself, but you can turn it around for the people who are coming after you. Yeah, I mean, which is, talk about eternity and immortal. I mean, that. so we may be gone, but our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, the same way we can inherit, you know, depression, we can inherit diabetes, we can we can also disinherit and decide that that's, I, I don't have to be sick. I can be well. So powerful. I just love, we can talk all day, <laughs> but I just have to say something right here, which Please. ties into my story. As you can see, I'm not the slimmest. And so again, why I was chosen because of my lifelong battle with obesity and some people are, you know, afraid to tell that story and I'm not afraid to, to tell it because I had to be, to go through this transformation as well to say, talk about it. Because, because of that, what we just talked about being the young mother and now sharing and making these small changes now. Yes, I might still be in the battle, but I hope my child is not still biting, battling obesity at 50 years old like myself. Mm -hmm. Or generations later, we've now not growing up on soul food like I was, but maybe my next two generations are vegan. Who knows? Right. So that's the key is to say, pain starts with me. I'm going to still fight at it. Trust me. But the goal is to make this bigger than me. Yes. And I want to change those habits that I was taught as a child and now still fighting, you know, at almost 50 years old. Yeah. But, you know, first of all, you look great. You're beautiful. You look great you're brilliant clearly so and bold so you've you're packaged um in a way that the world is really receiving your gift but a part of also what you are teaching us right now and I do the same thing is if I show up as if I don't have struggles then nobody can connect with me they're like oh Dr. Robin has it all worked out I'm like mm -mm, sit down for him you don't even have enough time to hear where I'm struggling and how long I've been struggling yes. with something. And then people are like, oh, you? And I'm saying, yeah, me. Uh, so that's the other piece of your power that as you share your, your own vulnerability and your resilience, you are teaching people that it is never too late to get in the fight and fight for your life and fight for your wellness. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. You know, just um, a question I have, and I was thinking as you were sharing about the woman who said that she cooked mushrooms and for the first time at 60, I'm thinking of, I have done work for the juvenile detention center here. I'm in Philadelphia. And this okay. is, yeah. And so these are kids who are unfortunately, um, you know, locked up and 
a lot has happened to them and things have happened through them as well. But I used to give these Friday night um, dinner parties for them. And a lot of the staff thought that I was so checked out, you know, like what world was I in and didn't I know who these kids were and what they had done. And what I knew is that they were human beings. Um, I knew that they were injured and I knew that possibly they had also injured people, but I knew that they were injured first. Um, and so in these Friday night dinner parties, I would do um, like really healthy foods. And then I would have like chips or something for them, but I would only have water for them to drink. And I said, and I'd have fruit. And so one of the girls said to me, I said, do you want to have some pineapple? And she said, what is pineapple? Mm -hmm. Right. She didn't know. And someone said, what do you mean? So the things we also take for granted. And I said, you know what? You can try it. It's a fruit, but if you don't like it, you can spit it out. Like I said, there's a trash can right there. You don't have to eat anything you don't want. And right. so she tried it. And then she came back and she's like, Dr. Robin, can I have more? And I said, of course you can have more. And so part of this is about how do we spread the table and how do we set the table and put the leaves in the table? And for old school people, they don't know about leaves, but you can have <laughs> a small table and then you can have tables that you can open up. Mm -hmm. and put uh, leaves in so that more people can have access to the message of wellness. And so you remind me of how important it is for people to see and read and hear the message of wellness. You know, I would um, love to ask you to, in closing, I could talk to you also um, forever, <laughs> so you'll have to come back. Absolutely. But, yeah, Absolutely. But, yeah, for sure. Because there's so many it's layers so and levels to wellness. But I'd love for you, I call this kind of the benediction, if you will, to leave us with something we can all practice, something we can all try, something you can leave us with, you know, because the magazine, your writing does this in terms of something that is actionable that people who are listening right now can today say, I'm, I'm going to try that tonight, or I'm going to try it this weekend because it's not too late. So yeah, share with us um, something that you can lay at our feet to try. Wow. Of course, so many things come to mind, but specifically I had a um... A quick interview earlier this week with another radio station, and they were talking about heart health. This is February, and of course, Black women, um, the number one killer of Black women is heart disease. And so I'm going to to lead with that because it is the number one killer. And so we have to start making small steps today <laughs> so that we can hopefully decrease those numbers. And specifically when it comes to blood pressure because blood pressure can be a silent killer, high blood pressure, excuse me. So I, I would probably love to leave this with the listeners is please monitor and check your blood, blood pressures, know your numbers. And if you can even monitor at home, uh, it's very common to have your own blood pressure cuff at home, uh, mm -hmm. just so that you can at least check it once a week or once a month and keep track and log. Because as we get older, some of it is naturally you know, we're increasing or decreasing naturally because of age. But if we are mindful of the sodium, if we are not mindful of our water intake, specifically stress levels, when it, I have to say, quote, Black women, because we take on all the things, which we can <laughs> have a whole conversation about that, it leads, it's just, again, that culmination of, of, of that silent killer. And then it leads to stroke in the Black women. We die at much higher rates of stroke than any other race as well. So that's got to be my talking point, um, yeah. starting and, with your blood pressure. Well, you know, that's um, such a powerful place. You hear people say, you know, that's going to make me stroke out. And they're often not meaning a literal stroke. They're talking about living under the stress that they are under and that Black women uh, in particular, often flash that badge, I say, of stress, almost as if we don't have a choice. And so you're reminding us that we do have a choice, not always easy, but we have a choice to choose wellness. 
And that's one step and one breath at a time. Yeah, absolutely. I am so grateful, Michelle Green Rhodes, that you are here, RN. Um, you have so much to offer. Tell us how to find you, your social media website, and um, how people can become a part of your movement. Yeah, and it absolutely has turned into a movement. So please follow the movement uh, by joining our newsletter, I would say, is the biggest piece of finding out what's going on. We send out updates every week. So colorwellness.co and it's .co uh, to stay in the loop of what's going on and where we are now and our tour that's coming up. So we're getting ready to hit the road this year. Um, but also you'll find our latest uh, issue and whatever is not in the current issue is free. So the current issue we sell, but the, everything else is turns free once the month rotates. So I would say our website is the best way. And then on social media is Color of Wellness Mag on all, across all social media platforms. That's beautiful. That's one. Thank you so much you. for uh, being here with me, for being with the Dr. Robin audience. And we will, um, I will look for you to come back and continue to teach and inform us of what can help us live um, the color of wellness. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Stay with me. I'm Dr. Robin, and up next is Unlocking the Heart of the Matter. <laughs>